I've seen a lot of videos on YouTube showing uh, some basic use of the Apple Pencil, just some people squiggling and creating marks uh, using it, but I thought I'd create a video to show a bit more of a sustained drawing from an artist's perspective, not just someone sampling the, the hardware. So, um, first thing to say is that I really like the overall design of the iPad Pro. I think it's a fantastic uh, size, both for portability. I mean, it's not so massive you can't fit it in your bag, but at the same time, it's, it's certainly big enough to feel like you've got a, a decent drawing space and surface. Um, in terms of the Apple Pencil, I really like the design. You can probably see I've modified it there. I've actually added um, the rubber grip from an old biro. That's just down to personal preference. I mean, I've heard people, other people say that it's a bit slippery. Um, and, and for myself, I do like to really sometimes sort of press hard and grip. So for me, I've found that slight modifications actually make a big difference to the way that it feels overall. Uh, but each to their own, you know, there's there's all sorts of ways that you can modify. I did initially think about putting tape around it, but I found something much more uh, durable and permanent in the rubber grip. Um, I found that my particular usage is perhaps not the same as everyone. There are You probably see from all the different uh, reviews and uh, other videos out there, there's different ways that you can use the pencil. Uh, you can see from this area at the end there, that, that whole area is kind of an active area potentially, where you can actually use uh, the side for shading, use the, the nib for smaller lines and such. Um, personally, I, I can see some application in that at times, but I'm also, I, I'm, to be honest, it's, it's not quite entirely accurate unless you're using like charcoal, um, or like a charcoal pencil even. It's rare that an, the average pencil is going to shade in such a dramatic way really. I mean, you can adjust it. I mean, I'm using Procreate here, which is pretty much the best art app I've found on, on, on Apple, on, on the iPad. Um, I tend to use when I'm sketching, just like the HB setting, when I'm doing full paintings, and I do a lot of paintings, which you can check out in my other videos as well, um, I will tend to use things like airbrush um, or the different sort of painting brushes. But when I'm sketching, which is what I'm, I'm ostensibly going to do now, um, I feel that a HB pencil or a 6B pencil, personally I prefer HB, I like the final line. Um, I think that's just, you know, it's closer to the actual drawing experience that I'm used to on paper and pencil. That's, but then again, it's great that an app like Procreate has so many options that you can suit it to your particular preferences. I've had um, different styluses in the past. I've had uh, the Wacom uh, Creative Stylus 1 and 2. Uh, for iPad and the the second one I found was a bit too clicky on the screen it didn't really gel with that I preferred the rubber tip um, but obviously it, it, you needed to have the capac capacitive sort of touch enabled with the older style devices with this however um, I, f I find it useful because I was forever making accidental marks of my fingers or making adjustments. I mean, you can set it actually in, in the in the app settings so that your finger can either be an eraser or a mark making tool or a smudge, um, or whatever you whatever you prefer really. But I prefer to have my hands completely inactive. The only thing my fingers can do is rotate uh, the image and zoom in and out. Uh, double tap gives you an erase of mark. Uh, three finger tap puts it back in, so it's an undo and redo button basically. So to actually make marks, um, you you do need to have the pen touching the screen, which I think is, is much better, much closer to the actual use of a pencil and paper, if you think about it. Anyway, I'm going to um, have a go at a study from this pine cone. You can probably see on camera. I do apologize if I accidentally knock the camera at various points. I've not got a very sophisticated setup here. It's just my iPhone on very shoddily taped together on a stand. So. Um, I'm going to do a bit of a study um, and show you the way that I work. Like I say, I'm going to actually on the HB pencil, when I click into the settings, I'm going to change the tilt so that it doesn't really do anything. So now when I tilt it, you can see that it isn't changing at all. I'll show you with the size difference. Yeah, I don't really want to use that just at the moment. If, if I decide to go over it later I can always do that but when I'm using like a natural pencil 
Um, yeah, maybe I'll just do it a little tiny bit like that, so it's a little bit more natural, perhaps. So I'm going to keep it slightly set on there. Let's get rid of those. Um, what else do I want to change? Well, I can change the opacity. You can see there, you can choose to have it so that it it, it, it doesn't change it hardly at all, depending on your pressure. Or you can turn the opacity to change more dramatically when you do pressure. That's definitely the, the mode that I'm going to use today. Um, and then the size, yeah, I don't think I want to change that because generally when you're using a real pencil, you know, the, the size of the mark you make doesn't change dramatically when you're actually pressing on hard. Um, and each to their own, you know, other people might decide that that's a really nice function for them. But I'm still getting used to the idea of I've been able to use it as a sketching pencil, really. My other stylus, style eye, that I used, I used for fleshing out pencil studies. So if I, before I get started on this, I can quickly show you, actually. So I would start with a pencil study, a kind of doodle, and then I would flesh them out on Procreate. You can see I've started to add colour into some more of my designs and then eventually, wait for it to load, eventually it would end up as a full colour piece. So it's really just sort of fleshing out, adding colour, adding texture that I would do with the other stylus. So this is a new experience really for me. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how, how useful it is as a sketching tool really. I've got a feeling... I genuinely haven't done any any real studies using this pencil yet. I've done a couple of doodles, but no sustained studies. So I'm curious myself as to how exactly this is going to go. So I'm going to shut up for a bit and see if I can get some drawing done. I'm not going to attempt to draw the entire pine cone. I'm kind of zooming in a little bit. I've always been more, more interested in uh, areas and details than necessarily the whole of an object. I'm still learning the use of the stylus, so I'm being, I have to say, a little bit more tentative with this as a medium than I would be with an actual pencil and paper. Still learning, still finding my, my way with it a little bit, but everything's a learning curve when you're dealing with materials and creative processes, so I need to concentrate, let's talk. There's undoubtedly a, a difference between having the grain of paper, having a, a real pencil drag along the surface of paper. There's definitely a, a difference there. But I, I imagine, like with anything, the more you practice with something, the more you become accustomed to um, using a, med a medium, actually, you, you get very used to it. I did find it strange at first. Um, having such a, a hard nib against the screen, having really gotten used to using the, the soft rubber tips of the Wacom um, creative styluses. But the more I use it, and I think the pressure sensitivity makes more sense really when you've had a, a harder nib touching the screen. The soft nib never really quite made sense with pressure sensitivity, even though it was available even though it was a, an option. I actually never really used it. I just took the battery out of it. I like the feel of the stylus overall when it was the Wacom one. 
Um, but I just took the battery out of it and never used the pressure sensitivity at all. Whereas this actually, it feels like it's just that bit more accurate in every sense. So the pressure sens sensitivity actually does make more sense. Perhaps another reason why I was interested to do this is be because um, when I've exhibited my work before, I've, I've kind of printed my digital work out on canvas prints and exhibited them. Um, I, I found it's been a mixed reaction to digital art in general, really. Certainly, a lot of younger people seem to understand the principle, but um, I don't wish to be ageist. But certainly, I found that there were, there, you know, there were some. Perhaps the older generation looked at it and didn't really understand. Um, but it was, it was still a traditional technique in a sense. It's, it's a modern day medium, and the tools are certainly technological. But in order to create a, a good drawing or a painting, it still requires those traditional techniques. It's not by any stretch of the imagination the machine doing it for you just a different surface with a different drawing implement, that's all. And so I was quite keen really to uh, demonstrate that actually it is just as painstaking and just as skilled a process. Could be defensive if you like, but... Uh, <laughs> quite like to uh, correct the misconceptions that are held in. I do think this is taking me a lot longer than it would do with uh, a pencil and paper because I'm still, like I said previously, I'm still uh, learning the technique really I'm getting that like I said this is just a, a demonstration really of the process of how to draw it if you are interested in my full paintings that are a lot more imaginative than creative than what I'm demonstrating here then please have a look at the rest of my videos um, they don't show me actually painting them in the same way as this they're just kind of a video recording it was actually done on the app itself as it, as it happens uh, they're just like a video recording of the painting it records it each sort of mark that you make almost like a frame and animation which you'll be pleased to hear I've actually sped up so what would have been like a half an hour video is at most a sort of two three minute video generally and I'm looking forward to being able to take this tablet wherever I go really. Clearly it's not going to work for observational stuff on the go, so unless you're doing very quick sketches, which again is a perfectly valid way of using the iPad or a deal where, although it has to be said if, you know, the, gone are the days where like Turner, where you, you do a quick sketch in situ end of the day if you have your iPad I mean I wouldn't want people to say the holiday snaps using an iPad but you do have a camera clearly built into the um, the iPad itself so arguably that makes the the need for sketching on the go a bit redundant if you already have your iPad with you anyway certainly good for sketching ideas I think I suspect is probably going to be the way that most artists and designers will use it. Personally, I, I like to, do, to put any ideas on here, certainly, but, but I'm actually interested in 
seeing all my artwork through to completion on the iPad. I do have a, a graphics tablet and do, have, well, I have previously worked on the desktop full Photoshop, which is undoubtedly, you know, a brilliant program. But having said that, the way that I personally use Photoshop, I, I use a very kind of narrow part of the program really, I use only certain tools, only certain things, because my general approach is to do it by hand in a traditional way. And so, actually an app like this on, on a tablet does pretty much everything that I need a program to do. And I suspect a lot of people will feel the same really. A lot of people that don't have confidence with full programs certainly, so maybe the more amateur end, hobbyist. I don't like the word amateur. Because in my experience, you have some quite brilliant artists that, okay, they don't make a living from it necessarily. They need to do other professions, other jobs to pay the bills, but that by no means makes them any less brilliant. But certainly anyone that's um, not as confident with the technology side of things, so doesn't necessarily have much experience with Photoshop or any desire to get to grips with Photoshop, this is a good kind of middle ground really, if you're more of a traditionalist. I think if you've kind of cut your teeth on all the tools and the processes of Photoshop, maybe an app like this won't cut it for you. But I've done a bit of both really. I have used Photoshop at times um, and used some of the tricks and some of the bells and whistles involved. But actually, there are other ways to achieve things too. The work I'm most proud of has generally been the stuff that I've done entirely by my own labour and hand, rather than relying on filters or lens flares or little tricks and techniques. Sometimes they're useful, but I think if you uh, are you selling yourself short if you don't try and do it at least some of the time by your own hand. Now you can see I've I've, I've roughly mapped out the area and of interest really. I will add some extra things here, but I'm just starting to zoom a little bit now. Um, short of putting my head fully in camera, obscuring the view, I'm just going to try and add the detail zoomed in here whilst trying to really look from a distance really at the object. Not quite how I would do it in an ideal world, but for the benefit of creating a video, I think I shall stick with this method. I don't always try to create a photo reel drawing either. I, d I do actually, when I'm studying an object, I like to create an understanding of the object really. It is ge a genuine, in a genuine sense, a study of the object. So I'm not looking to create something that's 100% polished or even accurate. I'm trying to get a sense of the, the subject. And that also means that sometimes I, I'm quite happy to leave a darker line around the edge, perhaps of the, the drawing. So it's a slightly, you could say a slightly more cartoony kind of, not cartoony, but more illustrative, more obviously clearly more of an illustration than um, completely naturalistic. I try to get the important details in and sometimes some of the details that you know I don't want to draw them too subtly on here I don't want to keep the edges too fuzzy because I want to be able to remember those details later on I almost exaggerate features so that I'm really getting to grips with what those features actually are and it makes for a more dynamic picture I think by the end of it So you can see here, I'm probably doing a darker line around the edge than is naturally there. But when you pop back out, it really gives you a crystal clear 
centre the form as well, more so anyway. Not totally crystal clear because it's quite squirrely in places. But... And you probably notice I'm not really using the eraser very much. I mean, it's something that, you know, if, if I'm drawing like a human face, I might need to erase and um, I would, you know, fret a little bit more if the details weren't 100% accurate. There's less need, to be honest, with this type of subject matter. It's about the impression of the object and the effect more than worrying about being absolutely accurate in every single detail. Some people complained about the fact that, you know, it doesn't have an eraser on the end. For me, I don't see it such a big, you know, hardship to reach over and click on the eraser button, really. I don't, I don't think it's such an inconvenience, personally. I mean, if it was a real pencil and paper, I would be reaching out over for the pencil anyway. I, I've never liked the quality of pencils that generally have a rubber on the end. They tend to be the cheaper ones anyway. So the pencils I prefer to use for real pencil and paper sketching tend to be the ones that don't have erasers, so I have to reach over and grab them anyway. So the experience is, is kind of similar to that. see this is probably the first time I've actually rotated the image as such. I have zoomed in a little bit but I guess because the object's there in front of me and it isn't moving I don't really want to rotate it much. Okay, um, it's a relatively quick sketch, I mean I spent about 45 minutes on it, okay. Um, if I was aiming to do a, a, a very much more sustained study, I might spend two or three hours a minimum on it too. But I just wanted to see, I wanted to uh, see for my own benefit and also to demonstrate for YouTube's benefit that actually it's a really nice sketching tool really. Um, with the benefit of being able to zoom in and out, with the benefit of being able to completely erase, not in a kind of unsatisfactory way that a real eraser sometimes rubs out. But if you make a mistake, you can completely rub out. You can also, as I will show you here, completely change the scale of anything that you were drawing. Change your mind, you just simply undo it. You can create different layers. So if I wanted to change the background on this, um, it's now effectively a drawing on grey paper. And if I wanted to, for example, um, sketch over here with highlights now and pick out some of the, the details. That's something that I could very easily do with a white as well. So there's definitely, I would say, advantages, not just as a kind of doodling, as a play tool, because um, it seems to be that, you know, that's the emphasis of a lot of iPad sort of art really is that it's, it's something that you can just have a play around with and I think that that's all that's perhaps been demonstrated so far but yeah you can sketch with it you can paint with it um, I mean I've just skimmed just to scratch the surface of what you can actually do 
but I thought it'd be quite nice to give a bit of a, a demo, a bit of a demonstration about what's possible really. Uh, for, like, like I say, my own benefit and for everybody else. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed watching this little bit of a, a sketch that I've done. Um, please feel free to look at my other videos, like, comment, subscribe, uh, share, please the whole shebang would be fantastic.